Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and I just read Zoe by J.D. Salinger. Uh, first thing this morning, I read Franny, loved it, and decided to carry on, and then spent uh, the better part of the afternoon reading Zoe. And I don't know if I think of um, this volume as a single novel or um, two short stories that uh, work as a pair or um, or how, however, uh, the whole collection of various uh, Glass family stories um, interact as separate works or uh, some sort of combination that work together as a whole. In any effect, in any anyway, this was a tremendous reading day, uh, starting with Franny and going straight into Zoe, um, just reading the whole thing. It's a short thing. And Franny is a, the single set piece. It's uh, Franny Glass, uh, part of the Glass family, one of the younger children. And uh, she's with her boyfriend o over lunch. And it ends with her um, having a breakdown, uh, fainting, and um, reciting these words in silently to herself that she had been talking about this book, um, The Way of the Pilgrim. It's the, the first, uh, Franny, it's a single set piece. Terrific. Tense. Uh, Zoe is maybe three times as long, and essentially we now have two major set pieces. They're both, um, <laughs> they're, they're both just terrific. They are, um, in some ways, exhilarating. They're exasperating. Um, the the whole the whole work is emotionally exhausting. But the the, the first set piece is uh, Zoe, um, Zachary uh, Glass, one of the middle children of the Glass family, and the, the Glass family uh, is composed of Seymour and Buddy. Um, I believe there's uh, five sons and two daughters, and they are um, just this batch of uh, brilliant, highly intelligent, precocious um, children that when they were young, they were contestants, uh, regulars on this uh, children's game show called um, It's a Wise Child. And they were uh, minor or local uh, celebrities. And in effect, the fact that all of these family members are extremely um, intelligent, highly um, educated, does work um, sort of on the, like a, a subtextual level. It, it works um, in the fact that everyone that speaks in these stories is hyper articulate. Everyone speaks uh, very eloquently. And the fact that they're all brilliant means that it makes sense. It's, it's not, um, sometimes you have a strange effect where uh, kind of common average, average everyday folks are talking and have uh, bursts of re revelations. Uh, the, these characters are highly intelligent, but they are also, all of them, uh, slightly immature. It, it, uh, the characters that are on stage are immature, emotionally damaged. They just speak very well, and they are very well read, very intelligent. And uh, Zoe begins, the, the second story, Zoe begins with um, Zoe in the bathtub, and he's reading a letter from Buddy. And Buddy is um, the oldest surviving uh, son of the Glass family. Seymour, as we know from A Perfect Day for a Banana Fish, or whatever the title is, um, he committed suicide. And ultimately, uh, this work is showing the ramifications of what kind of an effect a suicide can have on a family. And we're seeing different family members uh, spiral out in, in different directions and in different ways. Um, the the, the uh, short story Franny at least in part, her, her behavior c comes from um, just the, the damage, the emotional 
damage and baggage in, inflicted on her from um, having an oldest, uh, having an older oldest son, uh, brother um, who had committed suicide, and how that affected the whole family. Now we have Zoe reading a letter from his um, uh, brother Buddy. And Buddy's a has been uh, termed a, a recluse. Uh, he he's in a cabin in the woods. He has no phone. Uh, his mother, the mother figure, Bessie, can't get a hold of him. And Zoe's reading an old uh, letter, and his buddy talking to Zoe. And um, again, it's just like in Franny, it's a letter that has been um, read and reread and worn and creased and folded multiple times. The mother uh, makes an, an excuse to come into the, the bathroom. Uh, she wants to make sure Zoe is using the right toothpaste. And uh, she barges in, and then we just get uh, this long set piece of the mother and Zoe having this uh, tense, extremely hostile conversation. Um, Buddy refers to his mother as Bessie, so he's calling her by uh, her first name. It's not even remarked upon. It's uh, a signal to the reader what kind of complicated relationship um, Zoe and many of the Glass children have with their mother. It doesn't seem to be um, a term of abuse or disrespect. It's just a very different relationship that, that they have. And these two just talk about what's going on um, in, in Zoe's life. And eventually, uh, we find that Franny is in the living room. She had a nervous breakdown and she's uh, crying and um, sleeping for days. And the the story of Zoe is taking place just a few days after um, that episode, that set piece that happens in Franny. And we, we just see these uh, characters that are just um, at, at their wits end. Uh, the mother um, has a whole... Um, has to deal with Zoe and his ab abrasiveness and his um, sardonic, snarky uh, wit, and snide remarks, and um, his his brand of humor, which is not funny, uh, just um, an, an insulting, bratty, confused young man. Um, we we spend. 40 or 50 pages just watching him going through his morning ablutions while um, the, the, the mother is trying trying to talk to him and asking for advice and just wanting to see, is there anything that we can do? Um, she wants to get a hold of Buddy, the older brother uh, that's still alive. She's worried about him. She's concerned. Um, Zoe's response is um, just insensitivity in uh, mi mixed with compassion uh, it's, it's it's a highly realistic portrait of a tense uh, d difficult mother um, mother um, son relationship sometimes he can't help but be loving and we're just watching him going through his morning routine he's, he's in the bath he finally gets out he shaves and he shaves again he has to brush his teeth he's cleaning and fixing his cuticles um, all the while these two are smoking like madmen they're smoking cigarettes like it's a hot dog eating contest he, he's smoking he's smoking cigarettes in the bathroom he's smoking cigarettes while he's shaving he's smoking cigarettes while he's brushing his teeth the mother is just uh, sm smoking cigarettes and ashing in her hand and just chain chain smoking. It's an, the, the, both of these stories, but Zoe in particular uh, just has an insane amount of um, uh, tobacco <laughs> cigarette smoking and cigar smoking. They're they're painting the house. We find out one of the things that the mother is concerned about is that um, the painter's next move needs to be into the living room where Franny. Um, has been uh, sleeping. She's not eating. The mother's offering her um, 
chicken uh, chicken broth. She's refusing it. Uh, the father, who just sort of has a, a off-stage appearance, wants to offer her tangerines. And we get a description of uh, we get a description of the whole house. Everything is highly uh, detailed. That the, the smell of the house must be horrendous, but. Um, it seems like an, uh, a, a, an ex extremely well-lived-in um, Manhattan apartment uh, from a fairly well-to-do, upper-middle-class uh, family in the 1950s. We also have... Uh, th this story is extremely layered. We, we have um, the aspirations and pursuits and concerns of Zoe. We have the the motherly concerns of uh, Bessie, the mother, with all of her children. Um, the second episode, we have, um, at the mother's urging, um, Zoe and Franny um, having a confrontation that just peaks with um, tension and uh, uh, compassion and uh, um, abusive diatribes. Um, it's known that Franny is reading these religious books. Uh, she's muttering to herself and trying to have this incessant prayer. And um, it's almost as if Zoe thinks that he's the mature one. And he, he's uh, going to explain that he's been through all of this. And he's going to show her why it's all nonsense. And it doesn't, it doesn't work. It just makes things worse. Uh, it, he, he, he reduces Franny to tears. Um, she's in the middle of having a nervous breakdown. And, and he's smoking cigars while, while he's doing it, just pontificating and bloviating and being generally awful. Uh, in a lot of ways, most of these characters do come off as rather insufferable. But then Zoe kind of wanders around the house and he goes into um, Seymour's room. Seymour is the one son that committed suicide. There's another son that died in the war. He's reading these letters and just sort of ruminating and re regretting uh, just the actions of the day and how, how he treated his mother, how he treated uh, his younger sister. He has this ridiculous ploy where he's going to uh, call and pretend, call the house and pretend as if he's the older uh, brother Buddy to talk to Franny and try to console her. Of course, Franny's um, just too smart to be tricked by a silly ruse like that. And ultimately, they, they do have some kind of closure. And um, li like I said, b both of these stories, that the pairing of them, um, we, we get these um, specific episodes. So uh, Franny and her boyfriend at the restaurant Zoe in the bathroom with his mother. Zoe and um, Franny in the living room. Zoe by himself in his uh, dead older brother's room. Um, it's, it's all this domestic drama. It's, it's the, um, uh, the, 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 the tragedies and complexities and, and, and intense emotions of um, a, a lively f family that has gone through experiences and, and lives together uh, and suffers together. It's an incredible work. Um, so that's what I'll say uh, about about Zoe. So uh, let me know if you if you read it. Um, there's a lot more uh, a lot more thoughts that I have, but um, um, not being very organized. So, Zoe by J.D. Salinger. Uh, let me know if you've read it. Thank you for watching, and please uh, leave a comment if you would like. Take care.